Hi everyone, Renee Piani, international love designer, and I help people that are single and married really keep their relationships spicy. And I get questions from people all over the world, so if you have one, please send me one. But this one is all about staying in sync when you are a couple. So I, I put, the person said, what can I do? My husband and I are out of sync. We just don't know how to get that sparkle back in our marriage. So I wrote a blog about it, which I'll put the link here right below. And this is some of my tips for couples that are out of sync. Well, first of all, it says here, the biggest mistakes that most couples make are getting out of sync from overworking and the stresses from our hectic life between our phones and all of the stuff we have to do, shopping and all of the day-to-day -day routine stuff, we feel disconnected. And then these walls of resentment get built up and the tension builds up and then all of a sudden our partners stop coming on to us, we don't have a sexual connection anymore and the tension rises. So oftentimes our partners wanna connect with sex and we don't wanna connect with sex because we need to feel the emotional connection. So what can you do if this happens in your relationship, whether you're married or not? So first of all, number one is approach your partner lovingly to set up a private time to connect so that they can really be prepared. A lot of people when they're upset with their partners go, let's talk with a tone that really sets them off in a defensive state. So talk softly to your partner. And this is something that I do with my husband when we get out of sync. I'll go into his room, I'll put my hand on his back and I'll say, honey, I know we've been having some tension recently and I wanna make a special effort to discuss when we're both relaxed. So can we set up a time to talk? I love you and I wanna make our relationship a priority. So when you set it up with a tone instead of a pissy tone, it really does get the conversation started. But then you don't wanna ask when somebody's right in the middle of a project or a stressful situation with your kids or you know, if they're on the phone and you come in and say, you have to do it when they're a little bit more relaxed. So once you ask them, sit back and give your partner time to respond. Next. Both of you do some serious reflection before you meet so that you can share your feelings honestly. I know sometimes when my husband and I or couples that I work with will say, I, I really have a few points that I wanna talk about with my husband but I'm afraid to ask. You would really be surprised if you take a few notes before you get together. It really helps you to get clarity on what you wanna cover when you do talk. And you need to ask yourself, I, I, I wrote these questions. Get real with your heart. Stop and ask yourself, are you giving the love you want to receive from your partner? Are you making love a priority? What rituals will you design together to bring the sparkle back? So once you write out these feelings and answer these questions for yourself, you'll then be able to say these things to your partner if you've had time to reflect. The next key to this is to really get relaxed and make sure you eat before you talk because there's nothing worse than a grumpy, hungry partner when you're trying to have a really deep conversation. So this is what I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll be working all day and my husband will say, we need to connect. I go take a hot bath, I get something to eat, I create an environment for us to talk and it's in a zone where we're both open and receptive. So try it. Now, Eating is really important too. Get fueled first because low blood sugar will take you down a bad lane. And this is the most important key to listen, to really listen to one person's side and then have them tell you what's going on and really watch your voice tone. Because if you have that tension, it sometimes causes it not to work out. Next, you need to make some new agreements and vows to create a stronger connection. And sometimes this takes time. That's why it's important for you to find a coach or a therapist to really help you to design commitments that you're gonna make so that you can really make it work. And these um, rules can apply to people that you even work with or friends. It's really important for all of us to stay in communication with the people that we care about, the people that we work with, so that you're in sync. Because if you're not in sync, then things are not gonna flow. So with couples, a lot of times, once you talk, you'll start to feel this opening in your heart, right? And you'll go, oh God, I finally feel connected. Just slow down when you start to get reconnected. And what I do and what I recommend is just to go snuggle in bed and just feel the closeness so that you can build that 
that sexual tension again and that romance again because sometimes when you're mad at somebody for a while and you've been holding it in for so long it's hard to switch the light the other thing that I do when I get out of sync and this is my last tip of the day is I have a sign for us that our hearts need to connect so I have little hearts around the house that my clients give to me because all of my work has you take a good look at your heart so when you're disconnected from somebody that you want to talk to put a heart on their desk, put a heart in their bathroom, put a heart somewhere where they'll see it, maybe down in the kitchen. So if you're disconnected with your partner, even at work, you can put a heart down and say it's time for us to have a heart to heart. So I hope that these tips help get you in sync so that you can have more love in your life, better connection, and hopefully a relationship that will be in sync so you can have an amazing relationship. Thanks so much, and if you want more information on me, you can get it right here below, and I hope that this helps you get in sync.